Hello my dear friends, the purpose of this video is to encourage the beginning phaco surgeon to handle rock hard cataracts by phaco emulsification and not simply fall back to a small incision cataract surgery. I'm going to give you some tips on how to get clear corneas as well as effectively perform the nucleus disassembly in these cases. This surgery is being performed under topical anesthesia and I'm giving a small amount of subconjunctival augmentation as well. Although I would definitely recommend that the initial surgeons perform this case under a peribulbar block. Now this is simply because the surgery is going to take a longer time than normal and there is also a higher risk of complications occurring during the procedure. So after adequate anesthesia, a side port is made. You can see that this is a grade 4 nucleosclerotic cataract. Xylocaine is instilled into the anterior chamber 1% and then the anterior capsule is stained with tripen blue. Now a very hard cataract has got considerable amount of mass and it's going to take a lot of phaco energy in order to break this down. Which is the reason why while performing phaco emulsification the best technique to handle would be like a direct phaco chop maneuver. Because in a direct phaco chop we are using primarily mechanical forces to assist in the nucleus disassembly. While performing the capsulorexis, instead of your usual 5.25mm capsulorexis size, try to size the capsulorexis to slightly larger, about 5.5 to 5.75. This larger size capsulorexis will definitely help you to access the nucleus during the chop maneuver and also help you to mobilize the fragments once they have been created. The shiny surface of the nucleus clearly indicates how hard this nucleus is. Hydro dissection procedure should be done very carefully. You have to inject very small amount of fluid. Surprisingly, in order to make this nucleus rotate, we need only very small amount of fluid to successfully perform cortical cleavage hydro dissection. The anterior chamber is then filled with a cohesive and dispersive viscoelastic combo like viscoat or hylocoat. This is because this will help the coating of the endothelium and also the high molecular weight of this OVD will also prevent the fragments from flying around and hitting the endothelium as it will considerably reduce the velocity of the free fragments floating in the anterior chamber. Expose the phaco needle to about 2 mm because we need to bury the phaco tip to at least 2.5 mm into the substance of the nucleus. Make a almost vertical angle of approach, impale just anterior to the center of the nucleus and once you go to the adequate depth, make the initial chop. Now just try to initiate the chop, do not try to go through and through at one go. Sometimes you may just end up with a small superficial crack, it does not matter. If this happens, you need to just rebury the phaco tip once again and attempt the procedure, this time burying the tip at a deeper plane. If you see that the nucleus is rotating while initiating the chop and lateral separation, it means that you have not buried the tip to the sufficient depth. So if you have got a sufficient amount of depth, to which you've buried the phaco tip and then when you initiate the chop and the crack you will find that the nucleus will not rotate while attempting the crack as well as the fact that the fragment will separate easily and you will also be able to get a through and through chop that goes right to the posterior plate. So I'm burying it deep, it's tending to rotate so I'm burying it deeper and then initiating the crack. So once the crack is initiated you hold on to the piece and then you just use mechanical forces. See what is very striking in the technique of the direct phaco chop is that you use a small amount of cavitational energy to bury the phaco tip. A little amount of viscoat is topped up once again. I have created the crack and I'm trying to create fragments, at least six 
fragments in total or even more and I have to make sure that the nucleus cracking has gone through and through and the piece is completely separate. We do not want the pieces to be stuck to each other because when we are doing the nucleus mobilization or fragment mobilization, the entire nucleus will tend to string on. So once you are sure that we have severed all the leathery connections between the fragments and this you have to do by carrying your second instrument, in this case a sharp chopper which is at 1.75 millimeters long take it to the depth and when you carry the second instrument to the depth of the crack then the amount of lateral separation needed will be much less than if you attempt to create the crack by keeping the second instrument in a very superficial plane. Please understand this very important fact that the second instrument need to be carried to the depth of the crack in which case minimal amount of force and minimal amount of separation is needed to effectively create the fragment separation. Now once the fragments have been separated, mobilize only one fragment at a time, bring it to the central portion and emulsify it. I do not use continuous FACO mode, I prefer to use the multiburst mode in FACO, it is extremely effective. And this is the reason why I say that hard cataracts today can be managed with FACO because of advances in the fluidics of the newer generation machines, advances in FACO energy delivery systems and modes of FACO energy delivery, which enable short periods of the FACO energy with, with periods of cooling, which improves the vacuum, the hold, as well as the emulsification, as well as reduces the effect of FACO time while removing these fragments. Each fragment is individually mobilized, brought to the center and only one fragment at a time is removed. The logic behind removing one fragment at a time is that you will release a lesser amount of flying pieces that will fly around and which can hit against the endothelium and can lead to endothelial damage. Also, do not wave around the FACO tip inside the eye, keep it steady in the center and allow the pieces to come to it. If your settings are right, then the nucleus fragments will come towards the phaco tip being propelled by the fluid current as well as by the vacuum. Now when you come down to the last piece, you see that at regular intervals I have been topping up with this coat to protect the endothelium. I would advise that after every one piece of fragment that you remove, you can put in viscote. So this rock hard cataract which was huge, black and extremely dense and leathery is completely managed and what you saw is an unedited version of the nucleus management. If you follow the right principles of management, then this cataract can be easily managed by the direct FACO chop and you do not have to resort to a small incision cataract surgery. So you have to raise the bar in your own surgery. You have to move to the next level and be confident in performing FACO even in hard cataracts. The final step is the implantation of the intraocular lens. This is uh, a hydrophobic acrylic lens that is implanted using a silicon plunger system of injector which pushes the entire lens into the anterior chamber and you need to settle it into the capsular bag. And this is how the patient looked. This was 30 minutes after the surgery was completed after I finished my list. I saw them in the OPD. The patient had an unaided visual acuity of 6 by 12. 
The cornea was clear, the anterior chamber was free of anterior chamber cells or flare which was very very minimal to negligible. The patient was extremely happy, the surgery was done under topical anesthesia and the patient was sent home without a patch with just dark glasses. I thank you all for your attention.